Welcome to the Deadly Addictions channel. Welcome. Thanks for joining me. I'm going to be doing a podcast called Trauma in a Person's Eyes. So this is an article probably for the Sciences and Foundations for Wellness. And it is about a study shows how traumatic experiences can leave their mark on a person's eyes. This fascinated me right away. I got to this a little funny. I think it's by Kathy Thomas. And I'll give credit to... Um... Sylvia Pittman from The Mighty, which I'll go back to at the end because it has some nice tips about PTSD. As always, I'll read the article and discuss things here and there. I think this is from Swansea University. New research by Welsh academics shows that a patient's pupils can reveal if they have suffered a traumatic experience in the past. Post-traumatic stress disorder can occur when a person has experienced a traumatic event such as a car crash, combat stress, or abuse. They can be left with a greater sensitivity or hyperarousal to everyday events and an inability to switch off and relax. The research led by Dr. Amy McKinnon at Cardiff University has published and published in the journal Biological Psychology look for traces of these traumatic events in the eyes of patients who were suffering from PTSD by measuring the pupil of the eye while participants were shown threatening images such as vicious animals or weapons, as well as other images that showed neutral events or even pleasant images. The response of people with PTSD was different to other people, including people who had been traumatized but did not have PTSD. At first, the pupil failed to show the normal sharp constriction that is caused by changes in light level, but then their pupils grew even larger to the emotional stimuli than for the other participants. Another unexpected result was that pupils of the patients with PTSD not only showed the exaggerated response to threatening stimuli, but also to stimuli that depicted positive images, such as exciting sports scenes. Swanson University's Professor Nicola Gray, who co-authored the paper along with Professor Robert Snowden of Cardiff University, believes this is an important finding. She said, This shows that the hyper-response of the pupil in response to any arousing stimulus and not just threatening ones, this may allow us to use these positive pictures in therapy rather than relying on negative images that can be quite upsetting to the patient and therefore make therapy more accessible and bearable. This idea now needs testing empirically before it is put into clinical practice. Dr. McKinnon, who is now at Oxford University added, these findings allow us to understand that people with PTSD are automatically primed for threat and fear responses in any uncertain emotional context, and to consider what a burden this must be to them in everyday life. It also suggests that it is important for us to recognize that in therapy, it is not just the fear-based stimuli that need deliberately reappraising. If someone with PTSD is faced with any high level of emotional stimuli, if this is positive emotion, it can immediately trigger the threat system. Clinicians need to understand this impact of positive stimuli in order to support the service users overcome the significant challenges they face. Now, I think we need to make great strides on helping people with PTSD. We are finding studies that show it goes back to possibly even circumcision and genital mutilation, that the structure of the brain is changed on a neurological level. 
People with PTSD go through life and they're not really understood. Something like this is a could be a breakthrough. It could show that even positive things, even if you're celebrating a birthday and you're surprising them, positive things can still trigger that response. I think it's really important to understand this better, to help people better. It's getting too widespread, especially with the world we're living in. Now, the original way I found this was through The Mighty. It was by Sylvia Pittman, and I'll read that. So she says, what happened? A new study from Carp University and Swansea University shows post-traumatic stress disorder, PTSD, leaves its mark on the eyes of those who've experienced trauma. The study focused on documenting how subjects' pupils reacted to both negative and positive images. The studies found that the pupils of people with PTSD had a greater response to both types of stimuli than people who had not been through a traumatic event. And it goes on to describe a little bit about that study and talking about what it could lead to, new breakthroughs, that's such, you know, those type of things. The front lines. PTSD is often associated with veterans, but the condition can apply to anyone who has been through a traumatic experience. Symptoms often include flashbacks, nightmares, and severe anxiety. According to the National Center for PTSD, 78% of the American population experiences PTSD at some point in their lives. Certain careers are associated with a higher risk of PTSD, such as first responders, nurses, and firefighters. However, the highest incidence of the condition is found in sexual assault survivors, military veterans, and who have been in combat and survivors of genocide. Those who have experienced trauma can be triggered in the present by reminders of the past, like a smell or a certain location, which causes a similar flight, fight, freeze response. Another contributor, um, Kylie Marie, she had her experience living with PTSD saying, I've noticed my triggers and have taken the adequate steps to avoid intentionally putting myself into situations involving them. I've expressed my concerns to close friends so that my mental state can be understood. I am as prone to changes in short periods of time. You can learn more about what it's like to live with PTSD and navigate day-to-day -day events that can be triggering by checking out these articles. And it gives you some articles to hit. There are many resources available to those living with PTSD that can ease recovery. And they give you more. I'm going to put both these links to these articles into the description. So when this comes out, people can look at it. And like I said, I think it's important. I think uh, people living with post-traumatic stress disorder uh, are misunderstood for the most cases. And I think a lot of people have it that don't realize they have it. They don't understand the correlation between the feelings of anxiety and an onset of depression. What are these triggers? Um, you, you know... You're sitting around doing something with people you enjoy, you're having fun, and you just feel bad. It overcomes you. It creeps in on you. You can learn to figure out these triggers and these causes. This research is great. I wish everybody the best of health, mentally and physically. I try to do my part when I can for people I can help. If anybody wants to reach out to me. I am no doctor, I have no fucking um, certificates or nothing. I've just spent 32 years, 33 years, fascinated and really curious about psychology, neurology, human behavior, and I do try to help people and my friends and family when I can, so I'm always here for you if you need me. I wish people would take mental health a little more serious. Treat it like you would physical exercise, do some mental health and um, exercises like meditation and breathing exercises. So hopefully one day we'll be able to figure out the whole brain, give people a pill like an aspirin. But until then, we got to hope the researches 
and doctors and scientists just keep going at it. It's important. We are no longer hunter gatherers who spend all of our days uh, hunting, sleeping in two shifts, worrying about our food. We've got a lot of time to sit around with our brains and wonder about the world and our lives. We all should have a good foundation of mental health. So my best to everybody. Take care, everybody. Be well.